What's happening, fishing friends, and welcome to another episode. Down in the basement again today doing some lure making. Specifically, we're going to be doing some lure painting. Yes, today we're going to be painting something similar to this. This is a pattern I made last night. Here's another one I did. That one has a little bit more lighter green kind of tone to it. Overall, just a little bit lighter, but we're going to be making a bluegill pattern. It came highly requested after my first video, and thank you all so very much for the positive feedback on the first lure painting video. I'm far from a, a Debo Bob Ross at doing this stuff, however, it's a ton of fun and I think these came out pretty well. I like the way they turned out. Now here's a little bit different pattern. You can see I made the scales a little bit more prominent, a little bit different colors on it, but that's the cool part about painting your own lures or purchasing lures from you know somebody who does custom painting like this is you can completely match the hatch to the waters that you fish. You know, around here a lot of the small lakes, the ponds, the places I fish, bluegill are one of the main forage for the bass there. So if you're somewhere where you know it's highly pressured and you really need to match the hatch, some people say that makes all the difference. Throwing something that looks exactly like what's in the water as opposed to kind of just a generic, you know, greenish, brownish, bluegill pattern. I know a lot of people swear by matching the hatch and finding something that looks like exactly the forge that they're fishing or the forge that the bass are eating that they're fishing for. You know what I mean. Enough of me sitting in front of this yapping. Let's get this camera over there, start painting. All right, what do we need to get started on this project? Well, first I better get the old glove on. Yeah. And then we'll need a lure blank that is primed and ready to go. I have a couple here. This is a little 1.5 size. We can use that. All right, so that is a lure blank that is primed and ready. I just used some opaque white on it. They come clear for those of you who don't know. They come clear like this. This is when I was heating up trying to make some molds and stuff. You can see I kind of screwed up the bill there. Whoops. But they come like this when you get them out of the package. These are just ones I got on Amazon. You can see there they're completely clear. So you cover it with the uh, the opaque white there as a primer. So those colors that you're putting on over it are a little bit brighter, stand out a little bit more. Okay, so let's get this dude in the helping hands. And first off, I'm going to put a little base coat down of kind of a yellowish color. I want this to be kind of, you know, those yellowish type of undertones that a uh, bluegill has. And again, bluegills can range in color. You've got some that are really dark, some that are lighter, some that are not very vibrant at all. So all right, this is some new paint that I got. Uh, so far, I'm liking it. It's a lot thinner than the Craytex, but that's okay. Uh, this is the Woods and Water. I believe Badger makes this. Yep, Badger, Badger Airbrush. This is a, a yellow oxide, so I'm going to put a real light layer of this down, and then we're going to put our netting on top of that for that scale effect. And like so. All right, because this is a real thin paint, I dropped my pressure on this. I'm sitting at about 10. You can always do just a little bit here and test. Yeah, kind of a, a light yellow. So we're gonna do just a few coats of this over it. Again, going really light. I don't wanna put this on super dark. I want it to just kind of have that yellowish undertone. And I'm gonna go from uh, the top, eh, maybe two thirds-ish of it. I'm gonna leave the belly kind of lighter. All right, you can see the difference there. There's the belly of it, and that's kind of the yellow that I'm putting on. Just trying to put a, a real thin layer of that on top here just to give kind of a little bit different color that's going to show through when I get those scales on. There we go. Light layer of yellow on. I'm going to heat set that. Oh, forgot his nose. There we go. Heat set that. And let's get the netting on. Okay. And again, remember the big thing with this netting is you want to get this stuff on good and tight because if you have any of this loose, that paint's going to get under it and you're not going to have a strong pattern. So you can see here, this is a really small scale texture. When I was showing you those examples, this is what made that larger scale texture versus the really smaller fine scale. So I know some people like the smaller stuff, some people like the little bit bigger. Again, that's the beauty of making your own. You make it exactly how you want it. All right, and sometimes this is the tough part, just getting this stuff on tight without scratching the bottom. I noticed that's something I've been having issues with is the bottom of this getting scratched when I'm putting these clips on. Even just the netting when I pull it tight, it's kind of scratching some of that base white coat. So I don't know if I need to scratch my baits up more. Um, I haven't really done that much. So comment below and let me know if you're somebody who paints your own lures, do you scratch your lures up? And by that I mean using some sandpaper lightly on the bottom of them to, uh, to make the paint stick more. I don't know, I've heard of some people doing that and some people don't do that ever. So I don't know, and this is good and dry base coat. This was uh, the white stuff I put on the night before, so it's not like this is fresh and I'm just marring up fresh paint. This is all uh, all good and set on there. So I don't know. Comment below and let me know. All right, the first color I'm going to use, again, that woods and water. This is just a regular orange. I'm going to shoot this from the back of the bait going forward and kind of down into the belly. That orange is going to you know, be down here on the throat and such. I guess I should hold the bait up for you. Shooting from the back of it forward. That way I'm hitting the, the scales going this way. Going to kind of get some of that orange on the belly, you know, like you normally see a sunfish or bluegill. Going to kind of bring that up kind of into the body of it. So let's do that first. A few drops of this. Shake it up real well. 
One more drop for good luck. So I'm gonna hold the bait this way, looking at it from the back, and I'm gonna slightly go this way forward with it. However, I'm not gonna turn the bait and hit it directly on like this. I'm gonna shoot it this way with my airbrush pointing toward the nose of it, and go this way lightly. Forgot to hit that tail too, but that's all right. That's gonna be black anyway. I'm gonna lightly give a coat of this on, nothing too strong or bright. Bring that down to the middle a little bit. You can see there, there's some paint that stuck to the back of it. I should have cleared that off. Rookie mistake, Debo, rookie mistake. All right, that's what we've got on there now. So I would say the back uh, three fourths of it going this way up. So I left kind of the head, that quarter of the bait. I didn't really hit with the yellow. You can see there, it's gonna have spots there where it's missing. My paint wasn't completely dry the other day when I tried it and I pulled some of the paint out in my netting. Way to go. All right, again, sticking with that woods and water, I'm gonna go with a light green this time. You can vary your greens. You know, I could go with a real fluorescent, give it a different look. I could go with kind of a little bit more in between, you know, kind of a regular green, put this on light. Each green that you use is gonna give it just a little bit different look depending on what you want to achieve. A few drops of that in there. Okay, so just like I did with the orange, I'm gonna shoot this from the front of the bait going toward the back. And this is a, a tip that I learned from Jekyll Bates. If y'all enjoy lure painting, please go check out Jekyll. She is extremely talented, eight bajillion times better than I am. She makes some beautiful lures and she puts out a lot of instructionals like this, how to paint stuff, um, which is very helpful for a new person like me. So Jekyll, if you ever watch any of my videos, I thank you so much for doing those. Let's keep going. Let's shoot this from the front of the bait going backward. Now I'm gonna go to the back. I'll leave maybe the back third open. Okay, there we go. So you can see now kind of how this is starting to blend together. Let me put this in the dock. See the head area is a little bit more green. And when I mix in that blue on that green, it's gonna kind of give that tealish look on the, the bluegill's cheeks there. Fades into a kind of an orangish, rusty, brownish. Did I say rusty? Kind of a rusty brownish back there. And going into a little bit more brighter orange on the tip. So that's the cool part. You can make these however you want. I know I've said that before and stressed it, but I did already scratch up the bottom of that with these. I've got to figure out something for that. You'll see what I'm talking about that and you can fix it luckily, but it's a pain in the rear. Okay, so I'm gonna leave these on and go over it with a little bit darker color. I'm gonna go with some sepia, sepia. I've heard people say it different ways. I'm not an English major. Detail, sepia, sepia. I don't know what the correct pronunciation is. I can barely even paint on camera and talk, so. Oh yeah, and by the way, this does happen to be James Bond's favorite color, 007, get it? Ha! What's that, Lassie? The detail sepia fell down the well, oh no. Okay, and this is kind of an orangish brownish. Uh, this is gonna give a completely different look once we get this over. It's gonna mute out a lot of those really bright colors. And this I'm gonna kinda hit straight on-ish. I don't want to get too much on the cheeks there. I needed to, whoa, a little bit dark there. I want it to kind of miss those cheeks because I want that blue to go right onto that green. You can see that side, I got a little bit too much brown compared to that one. I want it to stay good and green. Ah, another beginner mistake. Anyway, that's all right. It's still going to come out cool. So we're going to stop there. It's got kind of that brown look over it. Leave that. Okay, next I'm gonna come over the top of that with some detail moss green. So you notice I've left the netting on. First, let's get some of this detail moss green and I'll kind of turn this rusty brownish lure into a, more of a bluegill color. Okay, so let's add some of this detail moss green on. So this is just gonna give it a little darker green color over that kind of the light green. And once I put this green on top of this rusty color, you're gonna see how it looks more bluegillish. Okay, there we go. More of that bluegill color that we're looking for. You can see that side is just a little bit, kind of more with, ah! A little bit more with the orange tone. This side you can see kind of has that rustiest greenish. It's kind of hard to see here. It does look a little bit more green in person on camera there. It does look a little bit more orange, but this will all turn out looking cool once we're done with it. I'm just gonna hit a little bit more green over on this side. Okay, time to heat set this. And again, heat set just means taking your hair dryer, like I've got here, a heat gun to it. You wanna get that over the over the paint, you know, get a good hot air moving over this to set that paint. That way when I tear this netting off, it doesn't rip the whole lure apart and tear it up. Heat set. Okay, feels like we're good there. Let's get these clips off and see what this looks like underneath. This is always fun. It's like Christmas every time you unwrap one of these. Look at how much I tore up the bottom of that. That is frustrating. I gotta get that figured out ASAP. Hopefully that just means I need to scuff those up with some sandpaper and scratch that up so the paint sticks a little bit better, but gosh, that is really frustrating. 
Oh, and look. Oh my goodness, this has been a debacle of a lure. That's the exact same spot where I had all that paint. It kind of stuck a little around it and then I left a, a bald spot. Oh well, such is life. This uh, this fish is going to have a bald spot there. going to have to cover up anyway. So that's okay. We'll cover all that up. That's the cool part about painting. Like old Bob Ross said, it's just a happy accident. But pretty cool there. You can see how that netting left all those scales on there. That scaling effect. Very neat. I like the way that looks. Overall, it definitely looks a lot more orange on the camera than it looks in person. More of a green look here. Oh, you can see there. Now it looks more of the true green. Yeah, that's more of what we're looking at, not that orangish color. I think it's the background. I think it's this kind of messing with the colors. There you can see more of that green, darkish green look to it. All right, so I got to get some white and fix that real quick. I'm going to fix that spot and blend this in. I'm not going to bore you all with doing that because it should have already been done to this point. So let's fix those. All right, we got her all fixed up. This is what we're looking like. Now, in fixing that, I also made another mistake. You can see I kind of splotched some white on the front of it there. It's okay. That's going to have some black and stuff over it. But I had to re-get the bottom of that paint of white. That's one thing I'm going to have to figure out because I'm tired of putting these on and getting that scratched up. Hopefully, that's all it was because I'm, I'm careful. I'm careful about putting these clips on and getting the bottom of that tore up. So I'm going to have to figure out how to uh, stop having that happen. But you can see that spot back there that was completely yellow. I got that all covered up and blended. That's what the other side looks like. The other side came out very nice. I like that. This side eh, looking a little rough. But hey, I'm going to show you the good, the bad, and the ugly of painting. Again, I am learning all this. So, All right, next I'm going to start painting the bottom of this. Uh, I'm going to get some orange on the front of it, the throat, and kind of blend some orange up into this. I can't, uh, I can't decide if I want to use like this, a sun yellow, kind of a yellowish orange, or if I want to go with kind of that bright orange that I used before. I kind of like this sun yellow. I can also do a tiger orange, which is a lot brighter. You can see there the difference between the two, yellowish orange, bright orange, or kind of a regular orange. I think we'll stick to that regular orange that we used first. All right, let's load some orange up in here. Ooh, turn that pressure down. So I'm going to take this up the bait to probably about here-ish on it. I'm going to leave that back, maybe quarter of it open, because I want to put some purple back there, the purple that you kind of see on the back of the bluegill. I'm going to kind of blend this up into the sides. Oftentimes that orange kind of goes up into the side of the bluegill. And the throat here, this is going to be a little bit brighter orange. I don't want it to be crazy bright, but blend that up in the sides here. Brighter orange as we get toward the front into that throat area and just kind of blend that up the side so you get some of that orange coming up into the green and such. Now that white's okay there. I'm going to speckle some black over this when I'm done. I also need to do the blue on the cheek there, so we'll just take that blue up a little bit. Remember, happy accidents. Don't be mad when you do that stuff. Just roll with it. Yeah, I like that side. Okay, did get the chamber good and clean inside there. I got all the paint out because I want this purple color, and I think I'm going to go with... There we go. I'm going to go with this violet. This thing was all sorts of tore up. I got this on Amazon, but man, it looked like this thing had been through the wash. Yeah, put the paint through the wash. Might as well sell it on Amazon cheap. Some idiot will buy it. Insert Debo. A lot of the bluegill that you find will have this kind of a, a whitish, purplish, violetish. I don't know. I'm not great with colors, but a, a real light purple kind of shiny color on the back of them. All right, so I'm actually going to hold it this way. That way my overspray goes up a little bit into that orange. And man, that orange is a lot brighter than it looks on here. But I'm going to go real light with this, kind of go back and forth. Just want it to be a real light purple area. I want it to kind of shoot up to that side a little bit. There we go. About like that. I like that. A little bit of purple there going up onto the back side of it. Oh, yeah, that's looking good. Okay, next I'm going to use some Laguna Blue and put some of that blue on the cheeks. So you notice the bluegills have that kind of bluish, tealish green color. Test that, make sure that's the color I want. Oh yeah, looks beautiful, looks great. Okay, so to do this, again, I did make a couple of little forms for my 1.5. So you can see this will fit over it. I need to take this off. Be really careful with this, not to scratch the paint or anything, but a couple little forms that I made to do the, uh, the light blue here on this gill plate. You can go as light or as dark with this as you want. Different bluegills that you look at have kind of a different texture there. So that one I'm going to go about like so on it. I like that. Heat set. So you can see there by using that stencil, I've got that blue to stay just on that cheek of it. Grab the uh, other side. 
Let's do this one. This one fits a little better. I need to just cut that part out where the bill is on the other one. This one fits better. All right, and there we go. Got the blue added on the cheek there. I like that. Those look about the same on both sides. I'm happy with that, coming out pretty cool. All right, next up, I loaded a little black inside there, some transparent black, transparent Createx black, and added a couple drops of reducer to it, which just makes that paint a little bit thinner. I can shoot it at a little bit lower pressure. Ooh, that's not low pressure though. I can shoot this at a lower pressure because now I'm gonna put my sidebars on here. Uh, you know, the, la the lines that you see coming down the side of a bluegill. I also need to get that black ear flap looking deal. I don't know what the technical term for it is. Then I'm also gonna darken up the top of it. You could leave it light like that. I like to darken just the top and kind of the nose of it, but if you're doing your own, you do it exactly how you want. So I, uh, I freehand these on here. So just moving up and down like that in real light lines. I think I'm gonna put maybe four or so on here. Move real light, you can barely see it there. Just like that, real light lines. I don't want them to be perfect. I know there's like stencils and stuff you can make, but each bluegill that you see is not exactly the same. So I don't care if these are 100% straight. I don't care if one's just a tad darker than the other. I kind of like the fact that each one looks a little bit different when I do it. I'm gonna darken the top of this just a little bit and I'm gonna shoot this pretty much straight on. Sorry, I didn't notice I wasn't in focus there, but I'm gonna shoot that pretty much straight on like that. I want just the back of it to have a little bit darker black color. A lot of those, the bluegill that you find living up shallow will have that darker black back type on them. Transparent black here, kind of merge that into the sides. And that's what we're looking on now. We've got a lot more of that bluegill. You can see there the lines aren't exact on the same side. They have differed just a little bit. And I kind of like that. I like that each one's kind of unique. The stripes are a little bit different on each one. I'm also going to run a little bit of this black up, almost like I'm doing an eyebrow on him. I like that black to kind of fade over the eye there just a little bit. All right, next let's get my little template out here and I'm gonna put those little uh, ear deals on. I don't know what the scientific term for that is, but we're just gonna call them ear deals on my show. I want that to cover and go just a little bit up onto that cheek. There we go, I like that. I want that to go just on the cheek a little bit too. I dig it. There we go. We have the little black ear flap on there. Again, going over to a stencil that I cut. I'm going to use kind of these long fins that I made there. I'm going to get that kind of down on the bottom portion of the body here and try to get that up close to that gill plate. Take that down kind of at a 45 ish degree angle. I just want this to be a real light, faint looking fin. Boom, just like that. I just want that outline. I want it to be faint. I don't want it to be real dark. If you look at the fin of a bluegill, that's what you see, almost that transparentish brown. I like it, just like that. There we go, real faint brown fin there. Real faint brown fin there. I like the way those look. There we go. I think we need to add some eyes in this. We're almost done. Now, a lot of people ask me about clear coating. Yes, absolutely, you have to clear coat. You tried throwing this in the water. These are water-based acrylics. All this paint would just come off and it would be a disaster. So do you have to coat these with something? Some people use like a two-part epoxy and paint it on. I got some KBS somewhere around here. There it is, a can of this KBS. However, this stuff is horribly potent. It is, uh, it is pungent and I don't want my whole house smelling like this. So we gotta get a, a ventilation system set up down here. I have all the stuff to do it. Just need to get it built and done. But this definitely will get a clear coat to give it that good shiny glossy look to it. And it actually brings a lot of these colors out, really enhances the look on there. So we will do that. All right, so for the eyes, I had a number of different eyes I could have used on these. Uh, a lot of the bluegill's eyes are almost a black looking. These are kind of a gold outside with a black pupil. So I think I'm gonna use these. Let's get those in there. I will need some uh, whoa, some super glue gel. Let's get some of that in there and that'll eye socket. Don't want a whole huge glob, just a little bit. That's all I'm putting on, a little bit like that. All right, and these don't really have a point on it, so I'm just gonna kinda go here. This part's so hard, I don't wanna get it all messed up. There we go. Clean this off. That part's always making me nervous. There we go, and it's on. Look at that, look at how much different that looks once you get eyes on it. And that's it, that bait is done. Again, all I need to do is put the clear coat on there, but I am happy with it. Kind of that purple-orange belly, the sides there you can see, 
very good bluegill looking imitation by no means perfect but hey practice will make perfect i'll show you a couple others i've done for example here's one i did where i kept it a little bit lighter on there so this is almost a yellowish goldish tone to it and here's one where i just kind of went hog wild with the the dark lines on it i just kind of freehand some of the cheeks so you can see there how it looks darker top there it's already got some dust on it from a couple nights ago but that kind of look came out looking pretty neat Again, some of those patterns I was showing you before. That one came out pretty good. Darker on top. You can see the subtle lines. This one looks kind of neat. I went darker with those fins. You can see the difference there. I like the subtle light brown fin as opposed to that really dark black fin. But that one, that one turned out pretty cool. I like the one we did here tonight. Also that one, that was another one I did just the other night. That one I took the tape off of it, everything. Used just a little bit different eyes there. You can see dark with kind of a silver outline so that one looked cool too but i don't know comment below and let me know which bluegill out of all these do you like do you like this one or things you do different comment below and let me know but hey we still need to do the subscribe fish and friends so let's go back over in front of the camera yeah, all right fish and friends that's going to do it for tonight i hope you all enjoyed i had a lot of fun painting that dude right there i don't know if it's going to look different in this light but it turned out pretty darn good i like it comment below and let me know if you all would use this would you use a crankbait that uh it looks like that. No Debo special. No, I'm still learning. I got a lot to learn, but it is a whole heck of a lot of fun so far. And for tonight's subscribe fish and friend shout out goes to John Denno. John, thank you for always watching and supporting. You're always good at commenting below and let me know your thoughts. So I do certainly appreciate you and everybody else out there who watches. I appreciate all of you, but it's uh, about midnight. I got to get to bed. So thank you all for watching and until next time.